Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel that is Vipin Sharma Biology Tutorials and today we are learning a very requested topic that is the mass flow or the pressure flow hypothesis. So what do we mean by mass flow or the pressure flow hypothesis? Mass flow, the mass or the sap is flowing by this particular mechanism and the pressure flow because that mass or that particular sap is flowing due to the pressure gradient. So this is known as the pressure flow hypothesis. This hypothesis is given by a scientist named Munch. Munch which is also a chocolate. So you can easily memorize it. In 1930. So this particular hypothesis is given by Munch in 1930. The transport of sap via phloem. Since we know about the vascular tissue that are present in plant body. These are xylem and phloem. These are the main vascular tissues. The xylem is known for the conduction of water molecules and the phloem is known for the conduction of food. Since the sap is water plus minerals, sap is water plus minerals. Since it contains some kind of minerals, so this is not a proper food, but this is, we can call it as a source of food, a source of energy. So this is transported via phloem. So, but the sap is not a proper kind of food. So this is the particular construction of that particular phenomena. Let us understand this particular structure. This is xylem vessel. Since these are blue dots and blue dots simply means the water molecules. Since the xylem is responsible for the, for the transport of water molecules. So we have shown some kind of water molecules here that is rich in water molecule source. After that this is phloem. Phloem has two major components which are known for the you know transport of different kind of sap so these are the sieve tubes this is the sieve tube which is surrounded by some cells which are known as the companion cells so these are very important this is the sieve tube and these are the companion cells these are the companion cells since sieve tube is devoid of nucleus it does not have nucleus but the companion cell have nucleus in it I have shown it with black color these are the nucleus and these are some plate like structures since this is a sieve tube so how does this tube has formed this tube has formed by the elongation or the joining of different kind of cells this is one cell this is another cell so these cells are joined to form a tube like structure and that particular tube is known as sieve tube and these individual cells are known as sieve cells there are some sort of plates by which some kind of sieve cells are attached with the help of these kind of tubes so these are known as sieve tubes these tubes are perforated perforated means these have some kind of pores and these pores are responsible for the transfer of different kind of solute molecules from one sieve cell to another sieve cell which are forming a tube so these pores are known as sieve pores so these pores are sieve pores this plate is sieve plate these whole tube is sieve tube and since we are considering it as stem tube so this is the sieve tube of stem and this particular individual cell is known as the sieve cell so how does the transport takes place so we are talking about the transport of sap the transport of, uh, transport of sugar molecules so since we know that the phot photosynthesis is a type of process that occur in the green leaves with the help of chlorophyll pigment so we are considering a leaf in which the glucose molecules has formed those molecules glucose molecules are first got converted into sucrose and that sucrose is the main sugar in plants the glucose is converted into sucrose which is the main sugar after that that particular sucrose molecules are transferred to the companion cell of phloem these are trans transported to the companion cells of phloem by the utilization of ATP that means this is a kind of active transport since the ATP is involved in the transport this is an active transport so the glucose molecules are firstly converted into sucrose and that sucrose is transported to the companion cells of phloem okay with the help of ATP since we have noticed that when we talk about symplast that is when a solute is moving from one place to another 
crossing a particular living cell since this contain nucleus so this is a kind of living cell so when a solute passes from one place to the another place crossing a kind of living cell that particular pathway is known as symplast which generally requires an ATP so the symplast pathway generally active process so the glucose get converted into sucrose which is transported to the companion cell of phloem via the utilization of ATP and since there are more sugar molecules and there are no sugar molecules in this particular tube right now because the sugar molecules are loaded this is known as phloem loading because the sugar molecules are loaded to the part of phloem that is companion cell since there are no sugar molecules zero sugar molecules and there are some sugar molecules so the sugar will diffuse from high concentration to lower concentration that is known as diffusion via concentration gradient because the concentration of sugar is more here and less here so the sugar will be transported from high concentration to lower concentration therefore some kind of sugar molecules are present in this particular sieve tube right now after that since there are large number of sugar molecules so the concentration is increased since here the concentration is increased therefore there is low water potential since there is low water uh, low water potential so to maintain the water potential some water molecules will be transported from xylem to this particular part these blue dots are the water molecules with the help of osmosis this is very simple to understand that there is very low water potential and to maintain that particular water potential some water molecules will come from the xylem part to the phloem part and since there are less uh, more sugar molecules in this particular part and less sugar molecules or no sugar molecules in this particular part because there are no sugars right now here the loading has taken place here and then they are moved towards this side and water molecules come to this particular chamber there are no sugar molecules right now in this chamber so due to the concentration difference the sugar molecules will move towards this side but this is not that much simple the main concentration or the pressure gradient is due to water so some water molecules that's why I've shown it with a blue marker some water molecules will tend to flow from their high concentration to low concentration or high water potential to low water potential so some water molecules move towards this side carrying some sugar molecules that's why I've shown one sugar molecule with one water molecule so the water molecules will be passed via this perforated plate to this side so there are sugar and water molecules in this particular chamber since there is more concentration of sugar and water in this particular chamber and no sugar or water in this particular chamber the same kind of phenomena take place the water will be passed from this chamber to this chamber and it will contain some kind of sugar molecules with it the same concentration gradient is followed again and same kind of transport also takes place the water molecule will be transported from this particular chamber to this particular chamber and they will carry some sort of sugar molecules with them so this is the sieve tube of stem and we are taking a very distant distant kind of sieve tube so this is the sieve tube of root okay and this is the companion cell of that particular sieve tube so like this while crossing some kind of perforated plates the sugar and water molecules will reach to this level at this particular part there is another process that is known as phloem unloading because the sugar molecules have to be transported to root cells why they have to be transported to root cells because the root cell have to do different kind of functions with the help of energy such as respiration so for that particular energy it have to be dependent on sucrose so that particular sucrose molecules will be transported to the companion cell because there are no sugar molecules so some sugar molecules are transported from high concentration to low concentration and from that particular place the sugar molecules are transported to the root cell with the help of ATP because this is a sim plastic pathway again in which the middle cell is living cell so this is also a sim plastic pathway which also require energy that is ATP so that particular ATP is helpful in crossing that particular membrane and for the transfer of these kind of sugar molecules to the root cell so what is with this water molecules 
these water molecules will be transported to the xylem vessel how since there is large concentration of water molecules since there are very less water molecules in this particular area and more water molecules in this particular area as this particular chamber has sugar and water the sugar is transported to this particular direction so the remaining thing is water so this particular part will have high water concentration and this will have low water concentration so the water molecules will be transported from this chamber to this chamber via the process of osmosis and since in this particular chamber there is less water concentration because the whole water is transported to this side okay as we have studied earlier so here the concentration is less and now here the concentration of water is more which are coming from this particular side so the water will be transported to upward direction that is from root region to the stem region so this is how the transport of different kind of sugars and water take place so there are some important points the transport takes place from source to sink source is the place where the sugar is formed for example it is formed in leaf and sink is the place at which the sugar is needed so we have to transfer transfer the sugar from source to the sink in this particular case the source is the green leaf and the sink is different kind of roots and they may be changed for example if you talk about the early spring season when there is no leaf all the leaf falls so at that particular time the sugar that is stored in the root region that will be transferred to different body parts of a particular plant so the source and sink may vary from season to season okay so the first process that we have talked about when the sugar molecules are loaded to the phloem region is known as phloem loading after that the sugar molecules are passed from different kind of sieve cells one by one one to another with the help of this perforation plate and after that there is phloem unloading so the phloem loading and phloem unloading are taking place with the help of atp since they are same plastic pathway and all the other type of reactions are osmosis diffusion then diffusion again so this particular diffusion again so this particular reaction don't need atp so phloem loading and unloading are atp oriented but the further transport of different kind of sugar molecules are not atp oriented that is passive transport so this is all about the mass flow or the pressure pressure flow hypothesis and i hope that this particular video is going to help you a lot in your examination thank you so much guys for watching this video if you really like this video then hit like button and if you are new then please subscribe to my channel thank you so much again for watching this video guys